Um, I'm, I really am very glad I get to be here today. Um, what Rajan first talked to me about was talking about the practical part of how does this really look in the clinic. And I was just going to title my whole talk, So What? Um, because we've heard some really amazing things from great speakers. And um, the challenge that I find when I do that is to, when I get back in the clinic, what does that actually look like? How do I take all this great information and have it apply to the person in front of me? Um, theoretically, I guess not, I'll just die. Um, so a little bit about things that you need to know is that I do teach a class in pelvic pain, um, pain in general, and what to do about it with Carolyn Van Dyken. Um, do get some royalties from the book. I think the joke is that if everyone in the room bought one, I could get a cup of coffee from Starbucks. So it's not great. Um, have a clinic in Chicago that we modeled after essentially what I'm going to talk about. Um, on purpose designed it to, to take advantage of everything we know about the pain science. Um, Benson, you're going to meet in a little bit, and that's Karen Litzy's cat, who um, is making his official debut as a model. Um, and the jewelry is by Brawny, so you should see her because it's lovely. There. Now you guys know everything. Um, so when a person comes to my clinic, what do, how does this start? What do we take the pain science? What do we do with it um, to make it make sense? And I start that with a question that I learned from an occupational therapist in my very first job out of PT school a million years ago. And he started by saying, well, you know, what if we just ask them what their goals are? That, we haven't gotten very far in healthcare if we're still talking about this weekend about we should have a patient uh, relationship and we should ask them what their goals are. But it's, it's still right. And so I ask the person, what does better mean to you? Because I want their definition of better, not my definition of what better is for them. And how will you know when you get there? What, is, what does it look like? What are the goals we're going to make between here where you are and here where you want to go? And I have them tell me what those steps are. Um, if I guess, it's going to be wrong. If I try and just use in physical therapy, we have to use all of the objective measures so that we meet the insurance requirements. Um, but those don't really fit the person in front of you's life. They may not care about their score on the s Westry. They might care very much about being able to clean their car. And that's not any on, on any of the tests. So asking the person in front of you. And then remembering that there is a huge difference between empathy and sympathy. Brene Braun does that gorgeously in the videos that she has and the workbooks and classes she teaches. Where sympathy is something where you will tell someone, um, you know, the, the at least, like you know, you know, my dog died. Well, at least you have another one. That's not terribly nice, but you could perhaps be a little more empathetic and understand that they really, really are upset by that. The reflective listening that Ronnie talked about earlier. Um, what that does with your patient is create some trust or your client. Because people don't come to me if they're feeling good just to feel better. They come to me because something's either hurting or not working well. I have highly motivated patients because if any of you in the room have ever, I don't know, sat down without hurting, you will know that that's kind of fun. Certainly having sex is a good thing and you might want to be able to do it. And that's the kind of thing we get to get my patients back to. So they may not be terribly excited about working for eight hours a day, but it's highly motivating to do some things in life. Um, and it should be fun. But most of my patients come in looking pretty much like that. Um, little stinky, little grumpy, not quite happy with what's going on in their life, and, and wondering what it is you're going to be able to do to help them. You know, well, you got all this fancy knowledge, you go to all these conferences, how is that going to apply to my life and what can I do about it? So I try and take that face and make it go away, no matter how adorable it is. And I said that we do it by, on purpose. So there's a look, probably a couple of years ago, at the lobby of our clinic. Um, and it's done in a way that you come in and just sit down. So you think, I'm going to physical therapy. It's sort of surprising to walk into something that looks more like a loft than someplace with treadmills. And there is no ultrasound machine in our clinic. Um, the, there will be when I stop drinking Starbucks coffee long enough to save 20000 or so dollars a real-time ultrasound machine, which is completely different. They're very expensive. Um, but what we did with this on purpose, from the color of the walls, which look a little yellow there, but they're a nice 
creamy latte color, uh, to the exposed beams on the ceiling and everything that we have is to create a sense of calm when someone walks in. It's a challenge, right? Because you don't want that really crazy spa-like place where it, it looks like you've spent a lot of money and then they wonder why they're paying you that much because it's, so we want nice but not too nice, comfortable but not boring, and did it on purpose. Because what it does is what happened the first time a guy came with our UPS order and he sat down in the chair and said, wow, this is nice. I thought we nailed it because the UPS guys never sit down and they're always in a hurry. And if his thought when he walked in that door was, I'm gonna sit here a little bit, that was really cool. So I get someone that comes in in pain and they're not looking forward to coming to me. Um, and they come in and they go, oh, well this doesn't suck, which is kind of nice. 